conditional probability. So we've done probability with the use of the word or. This uses the word and. Conditional means <coughs> that it depends on something, right? Depends on certain conditions. So we call these dependent events. And a key word that you will see usually in dependent events, the key word is without replacement. So let's say we have some marbles in a bag. Marbles in a bag, and we have two blue marbles, and we have three red marbles. Well, you'll have to adapt somehow to this. Two, you could you could draw a solid dot for blue and an open circle for red. You'll think of something. So let's say two blue marbles. And three red marbles in a bag of five marbles. So, what's the probability of drawing a blue marble? Two out of five, right? Probability is favorable over total, so be the number of blue, two over the total five. What's the probability of getting a red marble? Three out of five. Now, where dependent probability comes in is when we go to draw another marble. Okay, so we know there's two possibilities, right? We could, on the first draw, we could draw a red marble. So let's look and see what happens. If we drew red on the first draw. I have a bag. And this is what's left in the bag. Okay, so if we drew a red on the first draw. Then, what's the probability of drawing a blue on the second draw? Two out of four, or one half. If you drew a red on the first, what's the probability of drawing a red on the second draw? Two out of four again, right? So I call that the raw probability, right? It's the actual count. There are two. Um, reds out of four marbles. Okay, what if, though, we drew a blue the first time? So that's if we drew red, right? So here's the bag with the five marbles, and we got the probability, right? Blue, two out of five, red, three out of five. If we drew a red on the first draw, blue, two out of four, or one half, red, two out of four, or one half. But what if we drew blue on the first draw? So what happens next depends on what happened the first time, right? So if we drew blue on the first draw. Now, what was in the bag to begin with? There were two blues and three reds, so there will still be three reds. But there will only be one blue. So, if we drew blue on the first, what's the probability of drawing blue on the second? One out of four, right? Because there is one blue left out of the four marbles that were left, right? And there were five to begin with, so we're left with four. And what's the probability of getting red? 
three out of four. Okay. Now that's one reason to leave probabilities, leave everything out of four in this case, instead of converting to halves. We have to add or subtract or something. So what we can do <coughs> is we can draw a probability diagram that shows this scenario, right? So if you have a dependent event. So we started with, was it three reds and two blues? Yeah, three reds. So we started with three reds, two blues. And on the first draw, we could draw a blue or we could draw a red. And the probability of drawing a blue was 2 out of 5, and the probability of drawing a red was 3 out of 5. If we drew a blue, well, let's do both circles. So if we drew a blue, then we have one blue here, and if we drew a red, we have two blues here. And if we drew a blue, there would be three reds, and here there would be two reds. And then we're going to work through the probabilities again, right? We're going to be drawing two marbles without replacing, right? We're not putting it back in. That's the next. The next lesson will be what if you put it back in? Then what are the probabilities? So now we have two branches. And the two branches are, well, you could draw a blue or you could draw a red. And then we've got <clears throat> four outcomes, right? And the outcomes would just be what's left in the bag. <coughs> so this, two blues have been drawn. There's no blues left. Here there will be one blue. Here there will be one blue. And here there will be two blues. <coughs> and here it's just going to be all reds. Here there will be two here. And we worked out each of these probabilities, right? So we did that on the other page, but here you can do it just by looking at the diagram and counting. So getting a blue is one out of four. And getting a red here is three out of four. And getting a blue here is two out of four. And getting a red here is two out of four. <clears throat> now one thing to note is, what do each of these add up to? What's two-fifths plus three-fifths? Five-fifths or one. What's one-quarter plus three-quarters? One. What's two-quarters plus two-quarters? One. Four-quarters or one, right? So that in each sort of branch, if we take the branches coming off of something, it has to add up to one. It's got to count for all the possibilities, right? Like either it's a blue or it's a red. That's it. Can't be anything else. So that adds up to five out of five. Coming from here, either it's a blue or a red. Now, if we want the individual probabilities, so this would be this first one. If we follow this branch, you drew a blue and then you drew another blue. And what does the and do for us? What kind of operation? And multiplication, right? So we're going to multiply. So the probability of drawing a blue, so what we're doing is we're working out all the probabilities that can happen if you're drawing two marbles from a bag of five marbles where there are two reds and three blues. Okay? And those are, you can draw a blue and then a blue. And the probability of getting a blue followed by a blue will be two-fifths times one-quarter, which is two out of twenty, or one-tenth. Probability of drawing a blue and then a red is two fifths times three quarters, which is six out of twenty, or three tenths. Probability of drawing a red and then a blue is three fifths times two quarters, which is six twentieths, or three tenths. And the probability of drawing a red and then a red is three-fifths times two-quarters, which is six-twentieths, or three-tenths. 
And what do all of these probabilities add up to? So if you add all these guys up, what do you get? 10 out of 10 or 1, right? So that has to happen because we have to have accounted. That's all that can possibly happen, right? You get a blue and then a blue. You get a blue and then a red. You get a red and then a blue. And those probabilities should be the same, right? But whether you get red, blue, or blue, red. And you get two reds, right? A red and then a red. So we can work out each of the individual probabilities. And anytime we look in a, in a column here, the probabilities we have have to add up to one. Okay, so two-fifths plus three-fifths. These guys. Not these four, right? But just these, these. And then this is all the, all the possibilities that could happen. So the way that this works is <clears throat> the probability of A and B <coughs> right, and you can read that's the intersection, right? The intersection, but that's read as an and is equal to it's equal to this, right? So in English, so that last symbol simply means it's the probability. So first off, it's the probability of A. Whatever A is, right? Could be getting a red first. Probably to me. times the probability of event B, given that event A has happened, right? So this is the probability of event B, given that event A has happened. So all of the second probabilities we did all had all the first probabilities had a denominator of five, right? Because there were five marbles in the bank. <clears throat> so two out of five or three out of five. And all the second probabilities had a four on the bottom, because there's no longer five marbles, there are now four marbles, right? So it's that keyword I mentioned at the beginning, without replacement, right? So if you don't put them back then your denominator is always going to go down by one, right? You have one fewer marble in the bag. If you're drawing cards, you'd have one fewer card in the deck. And then we use this formula, right? So the probability of A, whatever it is at event A, so if this was a, a red and blue, that'd be the probability of a red times the probability of getting a blue given that a red had been drawn. Right. So the probability of getting a blue, given that a red had been drawn, you're looking at this circle. Probability of a red, three-fifths, and then getting a blue, well, there's two blues out of four. So that probability of red, then blue, would be three out of ten. Okay, And you'd be looking at three-fifths times two-fourths. <coughs> so let's say we're playing cards. You're going to draw a card, you're not going to put it back, and then you're going to draw a second card. And I want to know, what's the probability that you get a king and then a king? Okay, so the formula is going to look like this. It's the probability of getting a king times the probability the second card is a king given that the first card was a king. Okay. So when you're doing these questions, you've got to figure out, is this an or probability, or is a union P of A, U, B is equal to P of A plus P of B, or P of A, U, B is P of A plus P of B minus P, A intersect B, right? So depending on whether the events are mutually exclusive or not, then you're going to see the word or. Here, you're going to see the word and. You're also going to see without replacement. So this is the probability of drawing a king and then getting a second king, given that you didn't put the card back. So what's the probability of getting a king? Normal deck of cards, 4 out of 52. Given that you got a king, what's the probability of getting another king? 3 
Three out of 51, right? So we reduce. There are now three kings left in the deck, and the deck only has 51 cards left in it, right? We've drawn one out. So the probability of a king and then getting another king is 4 out of 52 times 3 out of 51, which is 1 out of 221. So the actual raw probabilities are just the counting, right? Like, you know, don't go with like, oh, it's one out of thirteen. Okay, it goes four to fifty-two. There are four kings out of fifty-two cards. If I've drawn a king, there are now three kings left out of fifty-one cards that are left. Okay, and then you can multiply it out and uh, <coughs> use <coughs> the two frac math enter enter to change it to a fraction and get one out of two twenty-one. All right, now, if the formula, so the formula they give us, right, so these two, these, this, there's two formulas. This is the bottom one on the formula sheet for dependent events. There's the other one for independent. We'll do that on, like, uh, Tuesday or something next week. Uh, so next few days, we're just doing the computer lab. Right? So the formula that we're given is probability of A intersect B, right, intersection is read as and, is equal to P of A times the probability that event B happens given that event A happened. Now, this formula can be rearranged. So you can rearrange it to solve it for the probability of B given A. So if I want to solve for this, what am I writing? Yeah, I'm waiting. It's getting boring for anybody watching it online. So, what's the formula? What's, how do you solve for probability B given A? Okay, so probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of A. Right, we've got to get rid of this. How do we get rid of it? We divide both sides by this, so it becomes probability of a intersect B divided by the probability of A. Right? It's just a rearrangement. You're just rearranging the formula. That's become a question they've asked a few times, right? It's like, so then, you know, how would that what would that look like in, in words then? How would you get a problem where you had to do this? So here's one. Seventy percent of your friends like chocolate ice cream. Seventy. Percent of your friends like chocolate ice cream. Thirty five percent like chocolate and strawberry. balloons does it take to fill the room? Okay. <clears throat> you will actually have questions. What percent of those who like chocolate also like strawberry? What percent of those who like chocolate also like strawberry? put these into letters, we could say, well, 
seventy percent like chocolate. <clears throat> right, so the probability of chocolate is seventy. Okay, we'll just keep in mind these numbers are percent, right? So they add up to one hundred. Um, thirty-five percent like chocolate and strawberry. So probably like chocolate and strawberry is thirty-five percent. And what we want to know is what? Uh, what percent of those who like chocolate? So given that you like chocolate, what's the probability you like strawberry? So the probability that given that you like chocolate, right? Those who like chocolate. So given, given that you like chocolate, what's the probability that you like strawberry? So we look at this. We just need to kind of shoehorn it into the formula there. And that formula, actually, this is what's on your formula sheet. And you've got to say, okay, 70% like chocolate, that goes here. 70 like chocolate and strawberry, that goes here. And if you like chocolate, it's probably you like strawberry. So <clears throat> this is the formula. We're going to go P of C given S. That's the thing we want to find. Probability that <coughs> you like strawberry, given that you like chocolate, is equal to the probability of liking both divided by the probability of chocolate. And we can fill the numbers in. So this is 35 over 70, which is 1 half or 50 percent. All right, so you have to understand what do each of these symbols mean. There's nothing on here that says, oh, this is for dependent events or this is for independent <coughs> events. Nothing on there that says this is for mutually exclusive, this is for non-mutually exclusive. Right? You basically have to work your way through a number of problems till you figure out, okay, wait, it's using the word and, we're not replacing stuff. That's a dependent event that uses this formula. What are they giving me? What do I have to find? Okay. Any answers that the absolute probability of chocolate given strawberry? Any answers have to be less than 100, right? You can't have a more than 100% probability. So any answers? Because they're going to give you an answer like 105, right? 70 plus 35 is 105. So 105 will appear as an answer. You say, no, this is probability. It can't be 105. Okay. They'll give you an answer like 35. So how do I get to oh, 70 minus 35? Maybe I subtract one. And then 35 divided by 70 is 50, so we've got answers like 35 and 50 and 70, and I don't know, let's throw one in. How about 85? We'll just take the 50 and add 35. Right? That way people who get the 50 go, wow, but wait, should I be adding that 35? They have an option to choose. Remember, all the answers that are out there are all, you know, reasonably plausible. I mean, not if it's greater than 100, you can't do that, but... Okay, so let's analyze the situation. You are going to play soccer and you want to be the goalkeeper, but it depends on who's coaching. So you are going to play soccer. Or you're going to play playoff hockey and you're their best penalty killer, so why would the coach sit you on the bench? Apparently didn't want to go much further than he did, I guess, right? It's really, really good coaching. Let's take the guy who's killed the most penalties. Let's sit him. Given that Anaheim only scored two five-on-five -five goals, most of their goals were power plays, why would you want your best penalty killer playing? Who knows? You are going to play soccer. And want to be... Goalkeeper. But it depends. <clears throat> so that should be sort of a clue when you're reading that. It says it depends. Say, wait, I bet you that's a dependent probability, right? It depends on who is coaching. So all of this stuff is sitting up in a box at the top of the question, right? So use the following information to answer the next question, right? And then you got this. You're going to play soccer. You're going to be the goalkeeper. It depends on who is coaching. Okay. Now you got lots of time to do the exam. So take your time reading the stuff. 
get out a highlighter, highlight important information, right? Like especially like rounding, if they say rounded to the nearest, if it's numeric response or whatever. Depends who's coaching. With Coach Sam. Probability is 0 0.5. With Coach Alex, probability, well, which probability? The probability of being keeper. That's the probability of being keeper. With Coach <coughs> Alex, Probability of being keeper is 0 0.3. And Sam is the coach more often, 6 out of 10 times. Could have said the odds of Sam being the coach are six to four. We wouldn't have to convert the odds into a probability because we're going to need the probability, right? Uh, they're not going to do that. I'll do that to you. I will do that to you. Um, they won't, <laughs> likely. Uh, and we want to know, given all of this, what is the probability that you will play goalkeeper? So the probability. You will be goalkeeper Actually let's move that probability rounded to the nearest hundred How many decimals is that? Probably the nearest hundredth, two decimal places, you'll be goalkeeper, is blank. There's a blank line and there's four boxes to fill out, right? Is, is it, right. <coughs> and then on the test, you're going to get the usual. Four boxes where you got decimals here and zero, one, two, three. And you got to actually bubble in the bubbles, that's what it actually reads. Okay. So, given all of that, how are we going to do this? The easiest way to do this is just to run that full analysis like we did for the marbles, right? So with the marbles, it was first marble, second marble. So here, it's Coach Sam, Coach Alex. Okay, so Sam, Alex. What's the probability that Sam is the coach? Six out of ten. Okay, how are we going to express that? <coughs> 0.6. What's the probability that Alex is the coach? 0.4. Because what do those two numbers have to add up to? One, right? It's either Sam or Alex. There is no other possibility. So this is 0.4. Whether Sam or Alex is the coach, one of these branches are you play keeper, the other one is you do not. So this is you being keeper, and this is you not being keeper. I'm just going to throw a bar over top. So the bar over top means not, or you could write the words not the keeper. Okay, so keeper and not the keeper. If Sam is the coach, what's the probability that you are the keeper? 0.5. If Sam is the coach, what's the probability you are not the keeper? Also 0.5, right? Because what do those two have to add up to? One, right? Because either you are or you aren't. There is no other possibility. 
If Alex is the coach, what's the probability that you are the keeper? 0.3. And if Alex is the coach, what is the probability you are not the keeper? 0.7. Now all we got to do is follow all four branches, right? And each branch is going to give us a different probability. So this is the probability that Sam is the coach and you are the keeper. Okay, so it's the probability of Sam times the probability that you are the keeper given that Sam is the coach, right? We already know that Sam is the coach, which would be 0 0.6 times 0 0.5. which is 0 0.30. <coughs> Next brand. Sam is the coach, and you are not the keeper. The probability Sam is the coach, and you are not the keeper, right? So that's a K with the bar over top saying not, is equal to probability that Sam is the coach, and the probability that you are not the keeper, given that Sam is the coach which is also 0 0.6 times 0 0.5 or 0 0.30. Okay, you need to fill in the next two branches. Okay, so I just, as you see above, fill it in, use the formulas, right? Probability of A, A and K is... Diagram is nice because it gives you, you know, it gives you each of the branches. You know, there's four of them. You get. I mean, you could also do it just by doing the individual probability, right? Probability of S and K. Probability of S and not K. Probability of A and K. Probability of A and not K. Multiply amount. Probability Alex is the coach is 0 0.4. The probability that you're the keeper if Alex is the coach is 0 0.12. Probability that Alex is the coach is 0 0.4. The probability that you are not the keeper given Alex is the coach is 0.78. Now, what must all four of those numbers on the end add up to? What must it do that? Here we go, 0.3, 0.3 is 0 0.6, 0 0.72, 0 0.81, 0 0.0, okay? If it doesn't add up to 1, you haven't accounted for everything, right? Or you made a mistake somewhere along the line. So that's a way to check back. So what's the probability that you are the keeper? Okay, so where are you the keeper, right? You're the keeper here. You're not the keeper. You're the keeper here. You're not the keeper. So it's 0 0.3 plus 0 0.12, 0 0.42. So the probability you are the keeper is 0 0.42. So not only do we have to do all those branches, we then had to look at each individual branch and say, well, what gives us the number we want, right? What gives us the answer? We want to be the keeper. Well, OK, in two of these four scenarios, you are the keeper. In two of these four scenarios, Sam is the coach. In two of these four scenarios, Alex is the coach. In two of these four scenarios, you are not the keeper. Okay. What we want to know is you are the keeper, so probability of being the keeper. This is an or probability, right? What are you looking at? It's probability that Sam is the coach and you are the keeper. The <coughs> probability of you being the keeper. It's probability that Sam is the coach and you are the keeper, or Alex is the coach and you are the keeper. So sometimes they come together, right? There's an or probability made up of two possibilities here, right? 
Sam's the coach and you're the keeper, or Alex is the coach and you are the keeper, which is 0 0.30 plus 0 0.12. Or to the nearest hundred, 0 0.42. All right, so there's uh, questions in the book to do, and there's ones about you setting your alarm and being late, or not setting your alarm and being late. Or, you know, so the scenario is two things. Just like Sam and Alex are the coach, it's like you set your alarm or you don't set your alarm. And there's two possibilities after that, right? It's either Sam or Alex's code, you're the keeper, not the keeper. And that is, you're late or you're not late. Okay? <laughs> so it's the same deal. What's the probability that I set my alarm and I'm late? I set my alarm and I'm not late. I didn't set my alarm and I'm late. I didn't set my alarm and I'm not late. Now, you'll be given all the information to work out each branch, right? And you don't need to know what's the probability of Alex being code. You know, one or the other. The probability of Sam being the coach is 6 out of 10, or 0 0.6, so the probability of Alex being the coach, you know, they're a complementary event. It's either Sam or Alex, or there's nobody else. Okay, you either set the alarm or you don't. So if you know the probability of setting the alarm, then you know the probability of not setting the alarm, right? Or you can work that out. You know the probability of being late, you know the probability of not being late. All right, just remember, each branch, in each of the branches here, Probabilities have to add up to one, each of these branches. And then the final, all the probabilities add up to one. Okay. So if you keep that in mind, you just have to, okay, what are they giving me? What are they not giving me? Well, they didn't give me this, but I can get that. And they didn't give me this or this, but I can get them because they gave me this. And I know that there's only two possibilities, so I can work out the other probabilities.